experience a new concept in flying. A thorough understanding of the basics now will be rewarding in the future. So let us explore together the joy and techniques of gyrocopter flight. I find it easier to assemble the rotor blades before attaching to the gyrocopter, aligning the scribe lines for proper pitch settings. We lift the rotor blade assembly, settling it between the two pillow blocks of the rotor head, balancing the rotor blade on the forward stop plate, and inserting the 3 8 bolt. the washers and a 3 8 castellated nut. And the procedure here in, in lieu of a torque wrench is to uh, snug the 3 8 nut and advance it to the uh, next hole. Inserting the all-important cotter pin, our safety pin. Checking the teeter motion of the rotor blade, see that it goes from stop to stop freely. And the rotor blade should have no more than five thousandths movement from side to side. The control system should go from stop to stop, forward stop, rear stop, left stop, right stop. The method that we use to start the McCullough engine is to apply a couple of shots of prime in each cylinder. A couple in the carburetor. Turn the fuel on ignition switch and pump the throttle four or five times, setting it at about a quarter throttle. The stance that I find most comfortable is to place the left foot in front of the left wheel, the right foot to the rear of the machine, your hand on the mast and reaching over and grabbing the trailing edge of the prop. With a knee action and arm action, it's a simple matter to pull the prop through. Immediately after the engine starts, step forward next to the control stick in front of the seat for pre-spinning the rotor blade. At this position, it's almost impossible for your hand to come in contact with the rotating propeller. Push forward on the stick with your left hand, spinning the rotor blade with your right hand. As the rotor increases in RPM, you can gradually move the control stick back. Starting the engine can be simple and safe if done properly. Until you get the hang of propping and know what to expect, it would be best to tie the gyro down or have someone hold it for you. By all means, use chocks. After you have the rotor blade turning as fast as you can possibly turn it by hand, position yourself in the pilot seat and secure the seat belt. Now we're for some 
slow speed taxi in with a terrible nose wheel, snubbing your forward speed with the brake. All the steering with a terrible nose wheel should be done at a very slow speed. The steering is one to one and very sensitive. You should do all your taxiing with a stick in the rear position. The transition of your feet from nose wheel to rudder pedals should be a smooth one. No need to hurry. The gyro should roll straight ahead if trimmed properly. After moving the feet to the rudders, experiment with some gentle turns, right and left, right and left. As you will notice, rudder effect is relative to the forward speed. The faster you go, the more response, the slower you go, the less response. Practice holding the machine straight with the rudder pedals. Apply more and more power, pretty soon the nose wheel will come up with a stick all the way back. Ease forward on the stick, it will accelerate forward. Back on the stick, the nose will come up and the machine will stop. Same throttle setting. Ease the stick forward to flatten the machine off and you will accelerate forward. Back on the stick, the nose will come up and the machine will come to a stop. The point that you want to practice here is to balance on the main wheels, keeping the nose wheel and tail wheel off the ground. If you take off in a nose high attitude, the machine will just drag itself back to the ground. Practice, 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 balancing on the main two wheels.